Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whenever you're listening. I want to congratulate you on taking steps towards bettering yourself, learning how to be a better professional in the real estate world. Today we are joined by Chris Brazell, Director of Operations for the Sherry Rihanna team. What's going on? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. You're doing well. <laughs> and my name is Hunter Boyd. I'm the Director of Sales for the Sherry Rihanna team. This is Mortgage Mindset. Today, we're going to continue on our non-QM series. We're going to be talking about two additional non-QM programs, the 1099 loan program and the profit and loss or the P&L loan program. And uh, let's dive right in. So, Chris, why don't we just go over a general review of what is a 1099 loan? Just Yeah. So let me let me start by saying so. I, let's just get down to the basics here. 1099, just so you all know, is different than a W-2. How is it different than a W-2? 1099 is just total gross receipts of income. So there's nothing deducted. Um, that, that's what makes the major difference between somebody that's self-employed and somebody that's a W-2 employee. So W-2 takes out your taxes, things like that, and tells you um, what you've made based on uh, your net revenue, your your net income. Yep. Uh, 1099 is just total gross. And so with that, you know, anybody that's 1099 is deemed in the mortgage industry is self-employed. Hmm. All right. So it, it, you get a 1099 from whoever's paying you for the work you've done. And then you have to file a Schedule C on your tax returns. And that Schedule C is where you start taking the deductions of depreciation, maybe expenses here, expenses there, things like that. And then you pay your taxes on your net revenue on this on this Schedule C. So a 1099 employee is exactly that. Somebody that is employed by an employer or is paid as a contract worker, uh, but they are responsible for their own taxes and deductions on their tax returns. Okay. And high-level view of a P&L or profit and loss. Yeah, so a P&L... Um, what that is, it's literally like uh, QuickBooks, you know, is the best way to think about it. It's you take your, your gross receipts and you literally start taking the deductions and say, okay, I'm deducting this expense, that expense. Maybe you pay employees to work for you, you know, so that's going to come off your deductions. And so a P&L is a way you keep track of your business income and expenses. And that's typically what uh, a self-employed borrower is going to give to their CPA at the end of the year to file their taxes. So the P&L is just tracking month to month, all your income, all your revenue and all your expenses. Okay. All right. So let's get the boring stuff out of the way real quick. This is a non-QM loan. This stuff changes literally overnight. Sometimes before you place an offer with a non-QM loan, if you know your client is using one of these products, we encourage you to reach out to your lender, whether it's the share Riano team or or whoever you're working with, confirm that one, that loan program is still available. The structure that lender had this loan program under is of still available as well, because even the structure, whether down payment, credit scores, things like that, all that can change literally overnight. This is stuff that they house, they monitor, they will take all the way to pay off, whether that might be by foreclosure or paying off the loan. So they kind of make up their own rules similar to like a local credit union. All right, let's dive into 1099 a little bit more, though. Yes. Um, so one cool thing I think about this program that a lot of people may not know is no tax returns are required. Don't need to see them. A lot of people, that's their number one question as a self-employed borrower is, hey, look, I write off a lot of my income, as you should. You should take advantage of the tax laws that are available to you. Um, but, you know, that does provide a little bit of a hesitancy for our self-employed bar- borrowers. So uh, a- allowing someone up front to know, hey, look, we don't need to see any tax returns. I think that is a huge relief off of a lot of self-employed borrowers' minds. Yeah, correct. And also it allows you to kind of get the best of both worlds. And what I mean by that is your CPA or tax preparer's job is to work for you on your behalf and take advantage of those tax laws that are out there that you can take expenses and in turn, it, it lessens your tax burden that you're going to pay the IRS at the end of the year for your, your tax bill. So you get to do that, take advantage of those rules that are out there, lessen your tax burden. And then since we don't need to see these, it helps you get into a house. So you don't have to pay as high taxes because typically if you're going to go a conventional route, we have to see two years of tax returns if you're self-employed. Yep. And so typically you got to back up two years and start telling your CPA or tax preparer, hey, I'm thinking of buying a house soon, which in, in is basically code for saying, hey, I can't write off as much of my re- as my income because the your CPA or tax preparer is going to know that we need to see the bottom line number. These programs are there. If you want to buy right now, you've already written off all your expenses, you can't go back and redo your taxes. 
and you don't want to redo your taxes because you're going to have to, you know, foot that bill of paying your tax burden to the IRS when you redo your taxes. And, and that allows us, you know, to get you in based on your gross receipts. So the cool thing about a 1099 is we can go up to a $3 million loan on these, which is great. That's incredible. That covers pretty much anything in the Raleigh area. Yep. It's a great loan. So we're going to look at your two years of 1099. You do have to be two years of self-employed. And the key with this is a lot of times we, uh, anybody that's self-employed, we can take two years as long as you're self-employed. It doesn't matter who you work for. A 1099 wants to see some stability, a 1099 program, excuse me. And so you, we are going to want to see that you're self-employed with a single employer for those two years. Okay. So that is the key with this. And so, um, you know, it's going to help realtors, you know, realtors, if they work for Keller Williams, work for Coldwell Banker, i.e., you know, any of those real estate groups. That's if it. If you're self-employed, a 1099 employer, but you're working for the same employer for two years, then this this opens up this program to you. That's awesome. So yeah, that is a, a unique thing about the single employer thing. I think um, a lot of people kind of assume, you know, certain different things. So having that as a, a little bit additional overlay, mm-hmm. um, I do love that this is an owner-occupied second home investment property loan as well. Uh, a lot of these things like the DSCR, that's only available for uh, investment properties, you know, so it, it opens up things there and also allows for a cash out refinance yes. so that, you know, if maybe, hey, look, appreciation ha- is happening in an astronomical way in the area. Um, my home's appreciated. Fifty percent in the last couple of years. Let me tap into that appreciation and really kind of use that to my advantage. Maybe I need to purchase another property. Uh, maybe I need to, you know, get into the investment space. Um, so that, that's really good. Mm-hmm. One of the things that seems to be consistent with a lot of these non QM loan programs, which I think is just mind blowing right now, is the forty year interest only yes. option. Uh, where for f- you, this amortization is not over 30 years like a traditional, it's spread out over 40 and it is only interest. So you are taking advantage of the appreciation by owning the home. However, you're not paying down that principal loan balance. You're making your interest only payments each month. That's going to be a significantly reduced monthly payment. Yeah, that's great because it helps you qualify for more of a home. Because since it's a 40 year interest only, we say IO in the business, but since it's a 40 year IO loan, you qualify on the interest only payments and therefore it can get you into a bigger house if that's what you're looking to accomplish. You know, in this, again, we're getting more income from your, your 1099s. We're getting uh, a lot more uh, being able to qualify you for a higher house with the interest only payments and things like that. So here's also the thing, 640 minimum credit score. I mean, 640. Yeah. That's, it, <laughs> that's... <laughs> it, it can go re- it, back in the day when they used to have these portfolio loans uh, rolled out. It used to be you couldn't touch any of these programs unless it was 700 and above. That's right. And now, I mean, this program goes down as low as 640. Also, minimum 10% down. So you're not looking at having to put 25, 30% down. 10% down minimum, up to 90% loan to value. That's great. That's really re- relaxed in the last couple of years. I mean, even yes. like I would say six months ago, we were seeing minimum of 20 and 25% down for some of these programs. And so to see a drop already kind of opening up, especially in 2024, where we're going to expect to see a lot more buyers in the market, I think is they're just trying to capture that. Yeah. And one other thing too, I want to touch on that is, is again, referring back to what you started the podcast with, you know, double check with us as your lender guidelines change a lot, Yep. but the seasoning requirements on, on past, let's call them hiccups, you know, bankruptcy foreclosures and things like that on a lot of these non QM programs, it's a lot less than conventional financing. So, Hey, let's say you had a couple bad years in a row, you know, things, things go south. That happens to everybody oh, on a lot of these. It's only two years seasoning from the, from the foreclosure, short sale, bankruptcy, any of those major credit hiccups. I mean, it's so, like half for yeah, some of our loan program. Exactly right. So, you know, again, if you're looking to buy now and you're like, I can't, I have to wait the four or five years that's required by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Talk to us. Yeah. Is it this a get in with 1099 B you don't have to wait the full four to five years uh, from the seasoning requirement past that credit hiccup. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's switch gears. Let's uh, let's jump over to PL real quick, do like a, a, a brief dive into it. Um, so one of the things about this program, it does the PL does need to be prepared by a CPA to, or tax preparer. It's not something you want to be able to, or you can do yourself. You need to have some level of authority involved in the in the profit and loss statement. Yeah, it's gonna that that's our what we call in the business a third party, a third like an uninterested third party. What that means is. It's somebody that it's just their job to draw up the C- the P and L. It's their job to you know 
and I, I don't like to say this, but it's, you know, it's their job to tell the truth, basically. It's That's right. Like they're uninterested in that fact is that they're just doing their job. They're providing the numbers to us based on what you provide them. And that way, that's how they're uninterested third parties, that they're giving us um, non-biased information. And so the p and is drawn up by the CPA tax preparer. Give it to us. We send it to the investor. We get the qualifying income and get it back to you. This also can go up to a $3 million uh, loan amount, which, as you said, covers most of the area. Um, now, this one does require 20% down, so it's a little bit different than the 1099. You're going to need that extra skin in the game so that the 20% down is required on this, but also 640 credit minimum, which is great. It's wild. Yeah, it's it's a really good program out there. And again, we just look at it uh, on both the PL and the 1099. We're going to want to see business bank statements as well, just to, to kind of correlate the fact that what yeah. you're giving us as far as a 1099, past 1099s, and a PL is going into your bank account month to month. So we are going to want to see these things to kind of double and triple check. But again, we do not need tax returns, pay stubs, things like that, that are not going to be required for this loan program. I think it's important to remember, you know, Conventional financing, there are so many guidelines, overlays, things like that, that, you know, all kind of point to the same income, W-2s, monthly pay stubs, things like that. Um, even your tax return in some situations will need. This is kind of the, a different way of referring that. When we have a 1099, yes, we can see the 1099s for the last two years. But also, you know, we're going to see need to see bank statements of this kind of as a secondary support. Like, hey, look, this income is still coming in. It's still consistent. Um, for P&Ls, I do like that we have a one-year and a two-year option. Obviously, the more verifications with any type of non-QM loan, the more verification, the longer the period of a review, the generally the lower the interest rate will be. So, you know, you're going to see a little bit more of a um, closer to conventional interest rate than you would on a two-year than you would on a one-year. Yep, but it does give you that flexibility if, say, you had one bad year and you want to only use the good year, you know, more most recent better year where – you got into the business and they had a lot of, you know, write-offs, expenses, startup costs. So even your P&L shows up a pretty, you know, let's just say a lower bottom line. And so you do have that one-year flexibility where if you're really ramped up and, and really doing really good business year number two in the business, then that will help you out a lot. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's good. Um, both these programs, I think, I don't know if we mentioned it earlier, but both these do require $150,000 loan minimums. Yes. Um, that's not a us thing. That's an investor thing. That's kind of like, you know, part of the making up their own rules there. Um, but once again, with P&L, two years of seasoning for foreclosure, short sale, bankruptcy, even the deed and lose stuff. Um, so once again, no, not having to wait the full four years there. Uh, there's options out there for people um, with all different kinds of dynamics. And this is what these both of these loan programs are for and other non-QM products we've talked to about in the past, DSCR and investment properties, bank statement loans. It's If you ever have a client or a friend or anybody that you talk to and say, I can't get a loan because I know I can't get a loan because I'm self-employed. That should ring a bell right then and there and say, hey, you need to talk to the Sherry Reality team, talk to Hunter and Chris. They, I've heard them talk about these loan programs because it relaxes the rules that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac put on self-employed borrowers where we have to use that Schedule C net income to match up with what you pay taxes on. This opens that up. So if you ever hear from somebody saying, I'm self-employed, I know I can't get a mortgage, you know, that this is what these loan programs are for. And for our lenders, this is also the benefit of being a broker, having different loan options available to you, having different programs available to you, not just the standard, you know, Fannie Freddie uh, hedged loan and, and, you know, write it up, send it off. Having these options are going to bring in more loans for you each and every month. There's going to be a different software you're going to have to learn for sure. There's going to have to be different rules and underwriting procedures, timelines, turn turn times and stuff like that. But it's going to help you bring in more loans for the real estate agent out there, making sure that you're knowledgeable. When you have that conversation with someone and you're just sitting down with them, they're telling you they're telling you, you about themselves. Hey, I'm a self-employed borrower. Honestly, I write off most of my stuff. I've kind of had this issue in the past where I went to a bank and they said they couldn't help me. This is these are cues for you to kind of say, hey, look, I've I've got somebody for you. It may not work out. Maybe it's a situation where unfortunately there's nothing we can do. But let's at least check, right? I mean, we're supposed to be doing our due diligence for these people, putting our best foot forward, making sure we're exploring every avenue to help our clients. Everyone deserves a home. And we believe that here at the Shared Ground team. No matter how big the house, no matter how small, no matter the situation, everyone deserves a place to call home. 
Well, look, this has been Mortgage Mindset. If you found today educational, if you found it informative or enjoyable to even listen to a little bit, maybe you like my voice, maybe you like Chris's, hit that subscribe, hit that like, hit that follow. We're here every Wednesday. Uh, we got one more episode we know of of non-QM. We're excited to share about Asset Qualifier coming up. Make sure you listen to that. I think it's going to help a lot of you. See you next week. The Mortgage Mindset Podcast is hosted by the Share Riona team at Clear Mortgage, powered by City First Mortgage Services, LLC. Share Riona's NMLS ID is 71774. Visit us at the ShareRionaTeam.com for more information about our team. The opinions expressed on this show by the hosts and their guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Clear Mortgage or City First Mortgage Services. Please note that Clear Mortgage is powered by City First Mortgage's LLC and their NMLS ID is 3117. Clear Mortgage and City First Mortgage Services is not an agency of the federal government and is not acting on behalf of or the direction of HUD FHA. City First Mortgage Services is an equal housing lender. Programs, rates, and terms subject to change without notice. Underwriting terms and conditions apply.